together. Amen. Help us to cry out to God mm-hmm. with all our heart, with all our soul, mm-hmm. with all our mind, with all our spirit mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Father, I cover each and every one of us with the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. From the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, mm-hmm. we cover our environment with the blood of Jesus, the heavens that are above us with the blood of Jesus, we cover inside and outside our homes with the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Father, we thank you for the power in the blood of Jesus <clears throat> that is capable of destroying any demonic agenda against our life. We come against Satan and agents of darkness with the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you also for empowering us with your words that tells us in Matthew 18, 18 that whatever we bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. And anything we lose on the earth shall be loosed in heaven. We command demons that are on assignment against our prayer meeting tonight to be bound and chained with everlasting chains and cast into hellfire by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, grant us complete concentration. Let us not be distracted. Guide us through everything that we're going to do this evening. I commit myself into your hands. I pray you use me for your glory. I submit myself completely into your hands, Holy Spirit. I empty myself into your hands. And I ask that you direct me. And I ask that you bless us. I ask that all the prayers that we're going to pray, you have already answered them in advance in Jesus' name. Father, take all the glory. Jesus Christ, take all the glory. Holy Spirit, take all the glory. We pray for our brethren who are not uh, present with us at this evening's meeting. But we know that all the blessings that are coming our way, they will also benefit from it in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for the fact that we're alive. Take all the glory always. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It is well. I'm going higher. Yes, I am. I'm going higher someday. Help me with that song. I'm going higher. Yes, I am. I'm going higher someday. I'm going up of the shadow. Into the presence of God, into the presence of Jesus, I'm going higher someday, hallelujah, I'm going higher, yes I am, I'm going higher someday, I'm going higher, yes I am. I'm going Jesus today. I'm going above the shadow into the presence of God. Into the presence of Jesus. I'm going higher someday. I'm going higher, yes, I am. I'm going higher someday, hallelujah. I'm going higher, yes, I am. I'm going to Jesus today. I'm going up on the shadow into the presence of God, into the presence of Jesus. I'm going higher someday. I'm going higher, yes, I am. I'm going higher someday. I'm going higher, yes, I am. I'm going with Jesus to stay. Oh, yes. I'm going above the shadow. It's through the presence of God. 
into the presence of Jesus. I'm going higher one day. I'm going higher, yes I am. I'm going higher someday. I'm going higher, yes I am. I'm going to give you more to say. I'm going above the shadow. Into the presence of God. Into the presence of Jesus, I'm going to have a walk to the righteous side. Move on to the righteous side. Move on to the righteous side. Hallelujah. Move on to the righteous side. Move on to the righteous side. Move on to the right hand side of God. Hallelujah. Move on to the right hand side. Move on to the right hand side. Move on to the right hand side of God. Hallelujah. Move on to the right hand side. Move on to the right hand side. Move on to the right hand side of God. Hallelujah. Move on to the right of side. Move on to the right of side. Move on to the right of side. Hallelujah. Move on to the right of side. Move on to the right of side. Move on to the right of side of God. Hallelujah. Move on to the right of side. Move on to the right of side. In the 
songs that we sang everywhere he went he was doing good Amen. Amen. that mighty healer he healed the lepers Amen. when the people saw him they started walking tonight the Lord is going to perform a spiritual surgery on us in Jesus name Amen. Amen. we have decided that starting from Monday we wanted to tarry in the Lord's presence not to ask him for anything, but just to repent before him and to ask for his help and grace to heal us spiritually in our spirit, in our soul, to, to heal us from all manner of sin in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You see that song we sang, the last two songs, Holy Spirit just ministered them to me as we were singing the first two. Jesus Christ went about healing, God bless you. Welcome, Mommy Claudia. Jesus Christ went about healing. And uh, the Bible says that there was no type of illness they brought before him that defied his healing power. And tonight, the Lord is going to perform a spiritual surgery, like I said, in a specific area in each and every one of us, in our heart. Hallelujah. And we lift him up. The Bible says when you lift the Lord up, hallelujah, mm. then he'll begin to do great things in our lives. Let's look at a few scriptures that will help us to bring this to context, and then we can go on with our prayers. For the benefit of those of us who joined afterwards, I was saying in the beginning that when we started that normally today should have been our night vigil 9 to 11. But since we are now incorporating the uh, repentance prayers, I was thinking or suggesting that perhaps maybe today we should pray till about maybe 8.15 or 8.30. Hallelujah. But if you're not able to stay up until that time, oh, that's okay. You can still log out by 8 o'clock prompt. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless all of us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Tonight, beloved, before we pray, I want to revert back because the reason why we are praying is because of the message that God gave us through evangelist Marie Vashko. In that revelation, there was something that was key there. And that was that God showed our sister that a lot of people were living holy and righteous lives. Or in fact, majority of the people she saw in that revelation, they were all living holy and righteous until just before the last hour. Mm. And that was when there was an issue. Because before the trumpet sounded, according to the message that God gave to her, some of those people made mistakes before the last trumpet. And that was why they missed it. But by the special grace of God, as God is working on us, we will be ready for the rapture of when he calls us home at any point in time in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me also share this revelation with you, uh, shared by one of our <clears throat> brothers. I think it was brought Samson Jude. He also said one time, some time back, that he had a revelation that just before rapture happened, he was fine, everything was okay. But he received a phone call in the revelation. Listen to this very carefully. He received a, revel- a phone call uh, from one of his relatives. Now, as he was answering the phone call, maybe the, 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 the content of the conversation was annoying. So as he was conversing with that his relative, he became annoyed. And within that moment, those few seconds, let's put it, that he became annoyed, the trumpet sounded, and he was left behind. So God is using all these revelations to warn us. Everything may be fine now, but what of the last hour? And I remember a few days ago, I think the day before yesterday, our sister prayed a prayer. 
Salah, she said, Lord, keep me ready. Amen. Even at, uh, 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 let me always be ready, even at the second of my death, or at the second before the rapture. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise yes. the Lord Jesus Christ. So Hallelujah. we want to pray. We want God to perform surgery, spiritual surgical surgery on our hearts. And the Bible will help us to understand why this surgery is necessary before we begin to pray. Let's quickly, first of all, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we'll read verse 12 and 13. 1 Corinthians. Remember, we're still on, this is day five of our repentance prayer. The Lord will be very happy with us because we didn't come to ask him for money. We didn't come to ask him for material blessing. We didn't come to ask him for houses or cars or whatever. We came to repent before him and to ask for his help to get us ready for the rapture or when he will call us home. First Corinthians, think about this scripture very well. So that when you are praying, you can put aggression in your prayer. First Corinthians chapter 10. This is exactly the context of the revelation that our sister has. Evangelist for verse 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And I'm reading verse 12 and 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 and 13. Look at it. It says, Wherefore, wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he what? Before. Before. You are standing now. What of the last hour? We have to be careful. Verse 13. He says, there has no temptation. In other words, there is no excuse. There has no temptation taking you and I, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that ye be able to bear it. Why should you miss it in the last hour? After all, whatever you are going through, Apostle Paul has been through it. Brosila has been through it. Apostle Peter has been through it. Uh, Bro Titus has been through it. Bro Stephen, even that was stoned, he has been through it. There is nothing, no excuse for us not to be completely ready at any given moment when the Lord appears. So even if we are ready now, the Bible is saying we should still be very careful. Very, very what? Careful. Why? Because in Luke chapter 22 and verse 31, Luke chapter 22, verse 31, the devil is up to something. In the life of every human being, and children of God are not exempt. In Luke chapter 22, verse 31, the book of Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Luke chapter 22, the essence of why we need to pray. Because the devil is up to something in the life of every human being. In verse 31 of Luke 22, see what Jesus Christ said to Apostle Simon, Brother Simon. He said, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you. That's an apostle. An apostle. Hmm. Devil is not a respecter of anybody. Yes. He said, Simon, Satan has desired to have you that ye may sift you as wheat. That was the plan of Satan. The same plan he has for me and for you. But look at what Jesus said in verse 32. Hence the reason why we're coming together to cry to God for mercy and in repentance. He said, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Amen. Meaning that the brethren as well needed strength because of the same plan of the devil. The Lord said to Apostle Peter, he said, when you, are, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. 
It is only somebody who is weak that needs to be what? Strengthened. Keep that in mind. Now we said that this evening our prayers will focus mainly on a spiritual surgery for our heart. Because the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17, I think it's verse 9. Let me check. Jeremiah chapter 17. I don't know if it's verse 9 or verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 17. Verse. Is it verse 9? Yeah, yeah verse 9. It, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things desperately. and desperately what wicked. Who can know it? Look at what the Lord said about the heart. In Matthew chapter 15, we'll end with this one. And then we'll start our prayer. Matthew chapter 15, we're reading three verses from verse 17 to 20. This is why many people will miss it at the last hour. Matthew chapter 17, no, Matthew chapter 15, Matthew Mark, Matthew chapter 15, verse 17 to 20. Matthew chapter 15. Look at it. Matthew chapter 15, verse 17 to 20. Jesus said to the apostles, you see, I'm reading this part very quietly, in a very sober voice, so that you can get it, get it very well. Why God sent that revelation to our sister? Mm. Verse 17, Matthew chapter 15. Do not ye do, do not ye yet understand which part do we not understand mm. that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought. Jesus was having a discussion with the Pharisees and the scribes, all those people that used to argue with the real doctrine, and they were arguing that oh. Uh, wash your hands and all those things. And he said that, and they said, why don't they wash their hands before eating? And so on and so forth. Then he said, again in verse 18, he said, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. Verse 19, for out of the heart, and this is why we need a surgery, proceeded evil thoughts. Murder, adultery, fornications, theft, false witnesses, blasphemies, and so on and so forth. Verse 20. These are the things which defile a man or a woman or a young lady or a young man. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. The heart is where all the problem starts. Because why? Before anybody carries out any action, they would have thought about it in their heart. Before anyone says something, they would have thought about it in their heart. The number one place that Satan attacks is inside where? The heart. Hallelujah. Hence the reason why this evening, I beg you, when we start to pray, you are praying for the Lord to perform a spiritual surgery upon your heart and upon my heart. So that whatever is in there that can preadventure, prevent somebody who is standing from standing firm at the last throne. Tonight, we want the Lord Jesus Christ, the healer himself, we sang the song, that mighty healer. He healed the leper. When the people saw him, they started walking. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Tonight, the Lord is out to do good for us by healing us of all manner of disease in our heart, fornication in our heart, adultery in our heart, evil thoughts in our heart, wickedness in our heart, unforgiveness in our heart, bitterness in our heart, lying in our hearts, uh, whatever, anything you can call it, it starts from inside the heart. And if somebody is taking uh, wrong medication, for example, you have malaria, 
Then you went to the doctor, and the doctor is prescribing for you emoji for stomach pain. It will not solve the problem. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, emoji for, for, thank you, sister. God bless. Emoji, you went to the doctor with malaria, and the doctor is prescribing emoji, which is for diarrhea. The sickness will not go. You have to target the sickness at the place where the, 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 the sickness is coming from. Hallelujah. So tonight, you're going to work on your heart. Oh. Because it is there that all the problems, are coming from hallelujah and we're going to sing this song first because god is going to create and open a new chapter in our heart and in our lives in jesus name open a new chapter daddy open a new chapter in my life open a new chapter Jehovah needs open a new chapter in my heart. Open a new chapter, Daddy. Open a new chapter in my heart. Open a new chapter, Daddy. Open a new chapter in our heart. Open a new chapter, Jehovah needs open a new chapter in our heart. Open a new chapter. Open a new chapter in our heart. Open a new chapter, Daddy. Open a new chapter in our heart. Open a new chapter. Open a new chapter. Open a new chapter in our heart. Open a new chapter. Open a new chapter. Open a new chapter, Daddy. Open a new chapter in our heart. Open a new chapter, Daddy. Open a new chapter in our heart. Open a new chapter, Daddy. Open a new chapter in our heart. Open a new chapter, Daddy. Open a new chapter in my heart. Open a new chapter. You hope for me. Open a new chapter in my heart. Open a new chapter. Daddy, open a new chapter in my heart. Amen. The first prayer. I implore you. I encourage you. You don't need to sit down there and pray. You can go away. You don't need to, we don't need to see you, but you must pray. Hallelujah. The first prayer, you're going to cry out to God. For God to have mercy on us and perform a severe spiritual surgery on our hearts. By his grace and mercy, you cry out. You say, Almighty God, God. remove every form of wickedness from my heart by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. God in I repeat the prayer. You say, Almighty God, remove every form of wickedness from my heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Beloved, open your mouth and begin to cry out to God. My Father, my God, my Creator. Unmute your mic, your mic and begin Father to pray. God in the mighty name of Jesus. My Father, Almighty God, God, in the name of Jesus, remove every wickedness, every form of wickedness from my heart. By the power in the name of Jesus, I'm not hearing some people pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Cry out to God and tell him every kind of wickedness, every form of wickedness, every appearance of wickedness in my heart. Father, have mercy. Father, I was my father's Lord Jesus, remove. Lord of Jesus, remove. 
of the problems that we have in our churches today. It is deception. The ministers of God deceiving the people of God, likewise and vice versa. Amen? Amen. Amen. What do you think is responsible for majority of the problems that we have in the world today? It is deception in the heart of many people. Yes. So the Lord will remove deception from us. Amen. Listen, let me tell you this quickly before we continue. God is able to perform spiritual surgery in your dream. I remember the case of a particular, I think it was a lady. She had some, uh, what do you call it, some eye problem or so. And uh, it looks as if maybe the thing was defined uh, medical, uh, what do you call it, attention or medical help. And she slept. And had a dream that somebody, I believe it was an angel, if you remember the testimony, came and performed surgery on her eyes. When she woke up in the morning, there was some water, you know, maybe like, you know, when you have what on her pillow. But she discovered that after that spiritual surgery in the dream, the problem that she was having with her eyes now was what clear. So God does perform spiritual surgery. The Bible says, that God is able to give us a new what? A new heart. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. We need a new heart because the Lord has showed us in his word that out of the heart comes all the abundance of what? Wickedness. Hallelujah. Now you're going to pray against evil thoughts. Our sister told us that in that revelation, the Lord showed her that a lot of people are still battling with evil thoughts. Evil thoughts does not come from the ears. It does not come from the mouth. It comes from where? inside the heart. So you're going to pray. Some of us, we, we still have all these kind of bad, bad thoughts because of maybe uh, many of the things that we are exposed to in our environment and the social media as well that we have today, exposing many of us to many evils that brings about a lot of evil thoughts in our hearts. But tonight we're going to ask the Lord in his mercy to perform a surgery on our hearts and remove every sickness of evil thoughts from our hearts in Jesus' name. You lift up your voice and you pray. You say, Almighty God, Almighty God. Almighty. remove Almighty. every form of evil thoughts Almighty. in my heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus. Almighty God, remove Every form of evil thought, every root of evil thought in my heart, Father, Papa, Richard, root of my heart, and remove it by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm asking every root of evil thought in my heart, Father, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, every kind of evil thought of our heart. Every the root of evil thought in my heart, Father of Ruth, of Ruth, of Ruth, of Ruth, of Ruth, by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Every fire in the name of Jesus Christ. 
verse 14. It reads thus, let the words of my mouth <laughs> and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You see, your thoughts, they are clear before God. As you and I are here now, I don't know what is going on in your mind. But as we are talking, uh, what do you call it? As we are physically talking and we can hear each other's voice, whatever thoughts that you have in your mind before God is just like when you are talking, what do you call it, verbally. In the spiritual realm, they can communicate by mind. They communicate by mind. They don't really need to open their mouth to say anything. They can just communicate by thoughts. So one can perceive spiritually the thoughts that is inside someone. So you are going to convert that verse 14 again into a prayer. David prayed it. We also can pray it for God to have mercy upon us and to help us. So you will turn it into a prayer. And you say, my father, beginning from today, let the utterances of my lips and the meditations in my heart be acceptable in your sight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Cry out to God. Cry out to God. Dare be cried. Dare be cried. Dare be cried. Dare be cried. In heaven today, because of His prayer life, in heaven today, because He still has to cry to God. Cry out to God. Perform. Cry out to God tonight, my Father, my God. Beginning from tonight, let the utterance of my lips and the meditation in my heart be acceptable in your time. By the power in the name of Jesus. Meditation of my heart be accepted in the name of Jesus. My God, I speak to you. My meditation of my heart be accepted in the name of Jesus. I can see the shape of Jesus. I can see it. 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 I can Never is just be you because it's performing it. It's touching on you. It's touching on for your heart. Oh, no. 
God bless you. God bless you. I renew a right spirit within me. Help me not away from thy presence, O Lord. I take not the Holy Spirit from thee. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. I renew a right spirit within Without me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that God has created us in his image, in the image of Christ. In the image of God, made he them, male and female. And the Bible says we should have the mind of Christ. In other words, translated in another way, we should have the, a heart like Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If our mind, our heart is not like Jesus, Ah, then there is a great spiritual disease. So you are going to cry out to God. You say, my father. My father. My father. My father. My father. Give me. Give me a heart like Jesus Christ, my Savior. By the power in the name of Jesus. Father, I have a 
the mind of God, the mind of God, created in us, 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 created in
with the heart of Christ. Amen. In Jesus' mighty Amen. name, we pray. Amen. Amen. The next Amen. prayer. The next prayer. You that you are playing with sin. You that you are toying with sin. You that you have tolerance for sin. God has zero tolerance for sin. You are still fornicating in your heart. You are still committing adultery in your heart. You are still lying in your heart. You are still uh, getting angry in your heart. You are still being deceptive in your heart. You are still committing murder in your heart when you think evil about others and wish them wicked, wish them evil. You are murdering them inside your heart. And the Bible says, out of the heart comes what we read it in the beginning, murder, murder. It's not only when you carry gun and shoot people. You can murder people yes. inside your heart. And the angel will be taking a record. Mm. Let it not count against any of us. Let he who stands take he. Let he what? He fall. He will not fall in Jesus' name. I will not fall in Jesus' name. You see? Mm. <laughs> so any of any heart that is in any of us that has been tolerating sin, you know, petting sin, sin feels comfortable with that heart. I'm going to pray that from today, we will have zero tolerance for sin in our heart in Jesus' name. Amen. So you will lift up your voice, the next prayer, and you're going to cry out to God to say, my father, beginning from tonight, let me have in my heart zero tolerance for every form of sin in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I begin to pray. My Father, beginning from now, let me have zero tolerance, zero tolerance for any type of sin inside my heart. By the power in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. My Father, my Father, my God, my Creator, beginning from tonight, beginning from tonight, inside my heart. Let me have zero tolerance, zero tolerance, zero tolerance for any form of sin. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I'm asking, 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 Lord,
Luke chapter 9. Eh? Luke chapter 19. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. <laughs> this thing is very difficult for many people. It's a spiritual exercise that in the hearts of many, they need a surgery so that they too can be able to be like this. Look at verse 8, Luke chapter 19. It says, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. This scripture is actually talking about restitution. Hallelujah. So tonight, those of us whose hearts have become hardened, when they hear anything about restitution, ah, have you not heard that some people have gotten to heaven and maybe because of one restitution or the other that they were not able to do. They didn't confess it. They didn't ask God for direction. They didn't ask God that, Lord, how am I going to go about this? They just left it. And then when they got to heaven, the angel will query them. Because there's a scripture that says that the angel will bring, when you get to heaven for the judgment, there, is a, there are books where they will bring the books and they will begin to query us. Did you do this? Did you do that? The restitution, this other, that, and so on and so forth. So we're going to pray. Oh, that any hardness in our heart against restitution, Holy Ghost, break it and remove it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. You will lift up your voice. You say, my father, every my hardness father. in every my heart against my... restitution, Break it and remove my heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. My Father and my God, every resistance, every resistance, every hardness in my heart, my God, King of God, in the mighty name of Jesus, every hardness in my heart regarding restitution, break it. Break it, break it, break it, break it in Jesus' name. Jesus, 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 Break it, break it, Remove it, remove it, Father, we gave you my 
Make it all not be almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, we have pray. In the last two or three prayer points, we're going to look at these two scriptures quickly. John chapter 8, verse 29. Jesus Christ said this about himself because of the Christ, the heart of Christ that was in him. He himself is Christ. John chapter 8, verse 29. John chapter 8, verse 29. <laughs> you want God to be with you? You want God to perform surgery on you in your heart? Look at this verse. Verse 29 of John chapter 8. And he that sent me. <laughs> Jesus Christ was speaking about himself. He said, now who can be greater than the Lord? He said, and he, thank you Lord, that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. Why? For I do always those things that please him. Do you see that? Why God is not close to many people? Jesus said, God has not left him alone because all the time, not sometimes, mm -hmm. not once in a week, not three times in a week, mm -hmm. all the time, 24 7. He said, I always do those things that please him. Mm -hmm. You are going to cry out to God that Father, <laughs> create a heart in me that will do only those things. <laughs> See, eh, the Lord is telling me that somebody really needs to pray this prayer. Mm -hmm. Tell the Lord, speak with him and tell him you are beckoning unto him for his mercy. Look, the Bible says in Psalm 103, uh, verse 13, God has mercy on us because the Bible says, Psalm 103, verse 13, it says, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who call out to mm -hmm. him. Jesus said that God was always with him and is still with him because there is something that he was always doing. He was always doing those things that please God. And that can only come out of a Christ-like heart, not from a heart that the devil feels at home with. So we're going to cry out to God. And we're going to say, Lord, I'm asking from tonight, give me a heart that will do only those things that are pleasing to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That person, if you love yourself, lift up your voice now and begin to cry to God. Open your mouth and begin to pray that my father, beginning from today, give me a heart that will do only those things that are pleasing to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father oh God, beginning from today, from today, Father, give me the heart of the Lord. I 
I didn't say the last supper. I said the last prayer. The last prayer. The last prayer. And it is something that affects a lot of people. And it comes out first from the heart. What we're going to pray tonight too. Because the word of God, the Bible says his word is like what? A sword. Amen. Amen. A sword that performs spiritual surgery. You know, there's a scripture in the book of Hebrews. It said his word divides right cut through the marrow. Amen? Amen. In Matthew chapter 20, we're reading verse 3. Beloved, if your heart has made you like this tonight, the Lord is performing a surgery on you. Matthew chapter 20, verse 3. And I will explain by the special grace of God. Matthew chapter 20, mm. verse 3. In fact, let me start from verse 1. Matthew chapter 20, let's read from verse 1 to 3. It says, For the kingdom of heaven, which is our aspiration, that's where we are all aiming to be, if not for heaven. If not for our desire to get there, we will not be gathering here this evening. Hmm. The Bible says in verse 1 of Matthew chapter 20, for the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that, that is an householder which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Verse 2. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. But then, verse 3. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle. Standing idle. Standing idle. Standing idle. In the marketplace. Many of us, our hearts have become idle. Idle for the things of God. Cold hearts, weakened hearts, 
Jesus said, if our heart is weak, he will spool that person out. He said, I would rather you not to be, uh, well, what do you call it, uh, 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 hot or cold. Though, I do. I do heart. They say, an I do heart is the devil's workshop. Have you not heard that saying? Mm-hmm. Many have become I do. Their heart has become cold. Their heart has become stony. Their heart no longer is able to endure the things of God. I do heart. I do in the things of God. No evangelism. And they will pray for God to help. To rekindle the first evangelism. No reading of the Bible. Sleeping whilst they are meant to be. Laborers in the vineyard of God. I do. I do. I do. I do. It starts from the heart. We're going to pray to God. The last prayer. We have three minutes. And we're going to tell God, ask him. We're not going to tell him because you can't force him. When you tell somebody something, it means you are forcing. But we're going to ask him, my father, beginning from tonight, every form of idleness in my heart, remove it surgically by your power. In the name of Jesus. I repeat the prayer. Say, my father. My father. From tonight, every form of idleness in my heart, in my heart, in my heart, in in my heart, my heart, in
Father, we decree. We decree that in Jesus' name it is written. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 28. He said, The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. We decree any power that is furious, any power that is running mad, any power that is angry because of the spiritual surgery which you have performed on our hearts tonight. We command those powers to perish in Jesus' name. We command them to die by the Holy Ghost fire. We command them to be bound in the everlasting chains and cast back to hell by the power in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Father, we decree it is written in Psalm 7, verse 11. It said, God is angry with the wicked every day. Father, those powers that don't want us to receive this message, that did not want us to come together to pray in repentance, to ask for your mercy and healing of our hearts. We command that your anger will never cease from those wicked powers, that you will destroy them by your consuming fire in Jesus' name. Father, I cover each and every one of us with the blood of Jesus. We cover our children with the blood of Jesus. We cover our homes and the heavens above us with the blood of Jesus Christ. We cover tonight with the blood of Jesus. We shall hear from you. We shall see the wonder, the testimony of the surgery that you have performed in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for manifesting your power in our lives. Holy Ghost, we appreciate you. We thank you over and over again. Take all the glory. We pray that you will keep us pre adventure if Jesus should tarry, and that by your grace you will bring us again tomorrow to continue to work on us by your great power. Thank Amen. you, Heavenly Father. Thank, thank you, me. mighty Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's share the great in fellowship. And the grace of our Lord. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest in the Lord with us now and forevermore. In the Lord's goodness and goodness and his mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And that each one will be our entire family. Let us have a few seconds of silence. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.